your students and friends let me have a very small session that can help you understand different types of anti-diabetic drugs which are commonly used in the market before i tell you what are the anti-diabetic drugs let me help you with the concept called as anti hyper glycemic effect versus hypo glycemic effect there is a difference if for example i draw a particular scale and mark this level or this range as normal range of glucose in a healthy individual that would be referred to as euglycemia if it is crossing the acceptable limits you call them as hyperglycemia if it is less than expected you call them as hypoglycemia of different severities now if a patient is in the hyperglycemic zone you can give a drug that can push the levels of glucose being very high and bring them back to normal levels so that it can meet in euglycemia those drugs are expected to be called as anti-hyperglycemic agents but some drugs may overdo their action and they can push the levels of glucose even below expected so they can expect to show hypoglycemic activity so some of these drugs can also be called as oral hypoglycemic agents how exactly do you know and you will be understanding the different kinds of anti-diabetic drugs apart from that of insulin you think about all possible ways by which you can bring the glucose down in the blood first the most common drug we all would come across and very commonly used by billions of people all over the world would be metformin and fenformin groups of drugs metformin as a drug comes under the group called as biguanides and their mechanism is to decrease liver glucose output what pathway it is gluconeogenesis early in the morning before you take breakfast you will not be having glucose from outside so the glucose that is filling your blood in the morning session before any kind of meal would be the endogenously synthesized glucose which will come from the liver so metformin can decrease gluconeogenesis and what are the side effects of metformin it can lead to lactic acidosis why because the glucose formation can actually happen from non carbohydrate precursors and when that happens you will be trying to know if for example pyruvate is not going back to become glucose then pyruvate will have an alternative way to become lactate so lactic acid production will increase especially when the person exerts a lot of physical activity also when he is living in low oxygen climates for example in hill stations he may have decreased amount of oxygen so pyruvate lactate anaerobic glycolysis can be activated because of which lactic acidosis can become predominant at the same time metformin can interfere with the b12 absorption so the patients can have b12 deficiency the good thing about metformin is it can decrease the body weight of patients because of which it can be very effective in case of type 2 diabetes mellitus patients who are generally obese now let's look at the next group of drugs for example those drugs will carry the names of the same sugars for example acarbose you can have voglebose you can have meglitol these kind of drugs will either be sugars or alcohol forms of sugars which are not easily broken down by the intestinal enzymes and these sugars are technically alpha glucosidase inhibitors this alpha glucosidase enzyme acts and lives on the intestinal walls and breaks complex carbohydrates and help in the absorption of simple carbohydrates when you try to inhibit the drug the sugars will not be broken down into simple sugars for absorption so they can be lost into the colon now they will be lost out in the fecal material so whatever the kind of food you take the food content of the sugar will not be reaching the blood circulation because of poor absorption but that sugar will go to the colon right in the colon 
the bacteria will act on them and cause fermentation. This fermentation will lead to formation of acid plus gas. This acid can lead to attraction of water which can lead to diarrhea through the colon. At the same time, the gas can lead to flatulence. The patient will have continuous persistent farting episodes. Now, what is the difference between the drug we saw here and the drugs we are seeing here? This particular drug will be very effective in the preprandial state. Preprandial means before you take a meal, the glucose will be endogenous glucose. So synthesis of glucose by your body will be decreased. While this alpha glucose dase inhibitor will be very effective in the postprandial state. After you took the meal, from the meal, the sugar absorption can be brought down. Now, let's look at the third group of drugs, which are dial, peptidyl, peptidase. Four inhibitors. What is the action of these inhibitors? They cause increased GLP-1 action. What is GLP-1 this is glucagon like peptide. Remember, glucagon and insulin have a very weird kind of relationship. You can have this glucagon like peptide capable of altering the insulin secretion. So, when you have these inhibitors, what exactly happens? The inhibitors will inhibit the peptidase activity. That peptidase is actually capable of acting on this particular area. Glucagon-like peptide activity, if it increases, then the stimulus for insulin synthesis increases and the stimulus for glucagon synthesis decreases. This is what I told you about the mixed kind of relationship with that of GLP-1 action. So, these inhibitors will break down the enzymes, break down the proteins called as enzymes which can break down the GLP-1. So when you are inhibiting these enzymes, then you are increasing the activity of GLP-1. GLP can generally increase the insulin and decrease the glucagon. Now, what are the names of the drugs which come under DPP-4 inhibitors? The best drugs can be referred to as gliptins. And what are the different kinds of gliptins you have? You have Saxa gliptin, you have Ceta gliptin, you have Alloglyptins. Now, you can think of the supportive activity from this particular group of drugs. They are well tolerated and they do not cause hypoglycemia. They do not cause hypoglycemia. What else are known for not having hypoglycemia? The first one would be the metformins. They also don't have hypoglycemia. Metformin also cannot cause hypoglycemia because they are trying to bring down the glucose formation only. Now, these alpha glucose inhibitors are neutral in the role of hypoglycemic agents. Then we have insulin secretagogues. Insulin secretagogues would mean those drugs who are increasing the insulin secretion. From where? From the beta cells of pancreas. Then why is this important? Because there is a type of diabetes mellitus type 2 A where there is decreased release of insulin because of which the patient is having hyperglycemia. Then what about type 2? In type 2 there is insulin resistance. So in those kind of conditions like B, insulin is available but the body is not responding to insulin while in type 2 diabetes mellitus A the decreased level of insulin from the insulin from the pancreas will be the primary problem. Now, these insulin secretagogues can pull the insulin out of the pancreas and they are also divided into sulfonyl urea group of drugs. Sulfonyl urea groups of drugs based on the chemistry. And you also have something called as non sulfonyl urea group of drugs. What is the common thing between both the kind of drugs? These drugs have shorter onset of action. It means they can have a rapid onset. But they themselves do not decrease the glucose. They will make sure the insulin comes out. Insulin will take care of the glucose. Also remember, they are capable of lowering the postprandial glucose. 
that is after meal the glucose levels can come down and one thing i would want you to notice is this sulfonylureas can be slightly inexpensive while the non sulfonylureas may be mildly expensive compared to that of sulfonylureas what are the kinds of drugs you come across glyclazide glyuride you can also have glycopyramide the drugs with azide uride pyramide are all sulfonylureas while if you go for non sulfonylureas they are glinides glinides which are your methy glinides natty or nate glinides and repa glinides and remember they have a shorter onset of action and both of them can decrease the glucose level after a meal while sulfonylureas are inexpensive non sulfonylureas are slightly more expensive let's go to the next group of drugs which are very interesting sodium glucose co transporter to inhibitors in simple words they are s blood s blood to inhibitors in kidney from the glomerular basement membrane when the plasma hits by ultra filtration you will get glomerular ultra filtrate which will travel through the tubules in the tubules there shall be 100% reabsorption of glucose in a healthy individual who doesn't have any kidney issues or who doesn't have much of hyperglycemia now in case of hyperglycemia people the glucose will be filtered and more and more will be reabsorbed some glucose may be coming out in the urine but more than expected glucose can be reabsorbed now these transporters help in the reabsorption of the excess glucose back into the circulation now you will use inhibitors the drugs can be cana gly flow zin and dapa gly flow zin these group of drugs can inhibit this particular transporter when that transporter happens glucose is not reabsorbed into the blood so that glucose will be lost in the urine and at the same time you realize it's a co transporter so whenever sodium reabsorption is failing sodium is also lost in the urine so in the urine you have glucose being lost and sodium also being lost you call them as natriuresis and glycosuria and remember these two compounds sodium and glucose are hygroscopic agents wherever they go water will also go so diuresis can happen so frequent urination can be a side effect also the whole urinary tract will be lined by the excessive amount of glucose running through the urine so when glucose is coating the urinary tract the patient becomes more susceptible to uti also remember because clumps and clumps of glucose can be lost in the urine up to 70 grams of glucose can be lost in the urine body weight loss is an additional feature which can be taken as a good side effect if at all the patient is obese let's go for the last three groups of drugs we have thiazolidin diones and what are the kinds of drugs you have under these group you have thioglitazones you also have rosy glitazones and what is their mechanism here these drugs will decrease the insulin resistance now they are also not capable of directly acting on the glucose what they'll do is they'll make sure the cells will be more responsive towards insulin the moment insulin comes into the cell the glucose transporters will go to the surface they'll accept the glucose and glucose can be taken up into the cell so they decrease the glucose insulin resistance and they also increase glucose utilization in the periphery now you all know the primary function of insulin is to uptake glucose the secondary function is activating glycolysis the tertiary quaternary function can be anabolism because the body is suddenly learning how to respond to insulin now the insulin's activity is anabolism it builds your body because of which it can increase your body weight and that is the side effect you should be worried about so remember whenever you give the drugs because insulin resistance is decreasing it can also help you in decreased insulin requirements so that the amount of insulin you take 
will become lesser when you are supporting the insulin with that of thiazolidine dione's now what are the side effects because of this weight weight gain you also increase the blood volume it can lead to congestive heart failure it can also lead to peripheral edema okay we come to the last two groups of drugs one is amylin agonist this amylin agonist best example would be pramlinetide what will this drug do this will slow the gastric emptying when the gastric emptying is being slower the content of glucose reaching the intestine will become lesser because of which the glucose again absorbed into the circulation will become slower so that the best effect of pramlinetide can be explained as decreasing the peak levels of absorbed insulin so it means you also accept the fact that this drug will be very effective in the post meals period at the same time this particular drug because of slow gastric emptying will also decrease glucagon release so that your body will be able to take care of and manage the sudden rise in the glucose because it is going to cause very slower peak in your glucose concentration enough amount of glucose is not important is available for anabolism so body weight increase may not be seen decrease might be seen in certain patients and let's go to the last group of drugs called as glp1 receptor agonists if you recollect very well we just saw another previous drug where we came across glp1 these peptidase inhibitors are inhibiting the peptidase which are capable of breaking down glp1 because of its glp1 presence is longer and longer so that the insulin secretion is increased glucagon secretion is decreased now here we are going to have a glp1 receptor agonist these drugs will go and act on the glp receptor and make sure they'll do the work of a glp1 and increase the glp1 activity again there will be increased amounts of insulin as we saw in the previous case and also they will cause decrease in the glucagon they also can help in one more activity they can slow gastric emptying the gastric emptying slowing activity is more in the glp1 agonist compared to that of the previous group of drugs like dppr4 also remember the name the drugs under glp1 receptor agonists will be albi glutide you can have dula glutide you can have lixi sena tide and these kind of drugs can definitely cause weight loss they can decrease your body weight and remember they do not cause hypoglycemia they do not cause hypoglycemia so whenever you think a patient will have a chance of going in for hypoglycemia choose the kind of drugs which can definitely not cause much of hypoglycemia so this brings us to a very short video where i have discussed about the most important essential statements about generally used commonly used market available anti diabetic agents hope this can help you in your preparation all the very best students thank you very much for your patient listening